Welcome to the right. podcast. Thank you. It's amazing to finally be on the podcast, not behind the podcast. <laughs> well, um, to I guess to introduce you to the audience, I'd like to ask, who do you say you are? I am Christina. That's the first thing, right? So I am Christina. I work in digital marketing. And one of my projects is working with podcasters and help create teasers for podcast episodes so that they can share it on their social media channels. And that's just a side of things I do in marketing, but it's a project that I created myself from scratch. I made it fun for myself to, in the first place, right? I called it the podcast cupcakes. And then I took like a few months, I launched it and then found amazing people to work with. So that's what I do in general. I do marketing online, mm -hmm. especially with people from other countries. I'm located in Romania in the Eastern part of Europe. Um, yeah, I think that's who I say I am, like from a professional standpoint, at least. Gotcha. That's, that's awesome. I, I guess what, what drew you to like podcast and wanting to do like helping others make the teasers? Uh, I was working a few years back with a digital marketing agency from Canada that had a lot of clients in the U.S. Uh, starting to do podcasts. They were coaches, health coaches, love coaches, life mastery coaches, yoga coaches, and they all wanted to have podcasts. So we started this process together on understanding how that's done, what are the benefits, and how we can make that easy and interesting for everybody at the same time. So after I didn't work with that agency uh, anymore because they switched direction, right? We went in different directions. Uh, I still like the part that had to do podcasts. So, and I said, okay, I'm not going to be a podcasting marketing agency. I don't want to do the whole thing, the editing, the everything. But I like the part where I get to listen to these podcasts and get to choose what would be interesting for other people to listen to, right? So that's why I created the, the service, let's call it, to create just the teasers. It's like I'm giving you my time and my uh, best choices for content that will draw people in plus the editing services where you cut it and make give it a nice design and keep it on brand right yeah. so that's how podcast cupcakes was born and i i like the uh the the way you advertise it like how you had the different types of cup, cupcakes it was like the lime strawberry yeah, and, yeah the, uh, the red velvet it was yeah i gave them names that i would like i wanted to be something different mm -hmm. not just video editing because i was putting my own personal print in it when you give me uh, something you work on for an hour with a guest and you trust me to make the best choice in those teasers or you give me your choice uh, you want to be able to trust that person and, and believe they can make such a good judgment, right? Mm. That's why I wanted my services to be as personalized and to me somehow, right? So that, that people would be drawn into it. And that was when I discovered how much, uh, how difficult it is to listen to your own voice because I, I wanted to create my own teasers with my voice as advertising. And I did. And I listened to my voice over and over and again and recorded again. Oh, and no, there's a background noise or something. So I, I know the struggle. I understand the struggle of going back and listening to yourself. Nobody ever likes their own voice. That's for sure. But I, I've definitely got to thank you for helping, helping me put out like great teasers week after week and just being able to give people something to, to be drawn to because a lot of times it's like you create things and you have conversations with people and just wanting to share it with the world. You're not really sure if people see it or if they resonate with it. And the more and more I, I talk to new people and they give me feedback on the podcast, it's like, oh yeah, I saw this and I, and I heard this and it's like, oh wow, like they're listening. Like it, like 
Instagram or Facebook or um, YouTube might not tell me that they're listening, but they let me know themselves. So I've definitely got to thank you for that. Uh, you're welcome. I love listening to your conversations because all of them are so real, right? Like even the ones recorded in gyms with a bad background in, in terms of audio, right? Yeah. <laughs> they, you you managed to capture moments that are very, uh, very real, right? And for you, I think it was important for you to choose those moments because you get to go back and find the value in that, right? Right. Um, <clears throat> And at this point, I don't know if you go back, if you if you did this exercise to go back to your first few episodes and listen to yourself then versus the episodes you have now, there's such a huge improvement in terms of confidence, in terms of voice control, in terms of leading the guests. So yeah, I, I don't know if your plans later on with this podcast will be to try to monetize it somehow or how you want to use it. Mm -hmm. But just for yourself, I think it was a, a, a very good improvement, right? Thank you. And, and like the skills <laughs> you, you're trying to hone. Right. I, I know you suggested to me to, um, since we just came up on two years of doing the podcast and you suggested, hey, it'd be a good idea to kind of highlight some of the things you'd learn. And I was like, I hadn't thought about that, but that's a great idea. So I, I recorded it and I did part one, again, with some of the car noise, because I, I started overthinking, like, how am I, where should I do it? Should I do it like this, where I'm looking at myself, talking to myself? And then I was like, no, I'll just record it in the car. That way I'm on the way to work. And I just have the voice recorder and I'll see how well it works. And then that'll help me get better at using another, another tool. But that's one of the things that came to my mind when I, I started listening, not only to past episodes, but when I was doing the, the daily reads that I do and just coming back to the month where I started and some days I'd missed. And I was like, I should probably redo this one because I don't care if it's an episode, but like, it's not right for somebody to listen to this now, knowing what I know and just like you said, showing up with more confidence and being able to lead someone in a conversation. I, I, I definitely gained that over the years and I'm, I'm grateful because almost every conversation, I learned something about the guest. I learned something about myself. And even today for us, even talking for the first time face-to-face -face, because everything's mm -hmm. been through um, email correspondence, but this is a a great new experience for me. Awesome. I like it that you kept consistent. So when I started the, the Cupcakes project, it was mm -hmm. like mid-2019, I believe. So by the beginning of 2020, I had many more people to collaborate with in the same manner. Mm -hmm. When the pandemic struck, uh, more than half of them gave up. And it was either costs or their core business was being affected, right? Mm -hmm. Or the they just couldn't justify doing this as well. But you kept consistent month after month, even with the pandemic. I think we had a short break at some point, mm -hmm. but it was a, in the grand scheme of things, it was very short. And for you to keep consistent, despite now knowing that some episodes could have been better and still putting things out, that's that's discipline and i admire that because it's hard to it, it's like going on a diet right uh you need to stay consistent that's how things will happen <laughs> you can't put out two episodes and then expect things to to magically be at a certain level right right and you and you did that very well thank you and a big You're thing welcome. has been um not to look too much at what other people are doing and just to really really stay focused and be like this is the goal focus on doing this even as the year's wrapping up um i've recorded more more and more episodes and similar to like 2019 when we first started i was excited about like oh i've almost got all of 2020 laid out but it was like no don't it's good but don't get caught up in that like stay consistent in recording on the weekends, a few times in the month, and then just continue to do that because transitioning from 
one job to another. It's like, you never know how much time one thing's going to take. And then even if it's starting a family in the future, like this might take time or that might take time, but just what working with yourself and working with Donald and just seeing the like vast amount of podcasts you guys have to listen to. I'm like, they've found a way to do it. They still enjoy it. So it's like, don't give up that thing that you actually find joy in and it allows you to be creative. So I, I, I thank you for that, for the compliment, but also for just being ahead of me to just like, I, I send you a couple of things and you just like, boom, like send them right back. I'm like, whoa, that was very quick. And the quality is always on point. Thanks. That's awesome. For me, it's um, working with things I like, with projects I like, right? I couldn't do this if you were, I don't know, be talking about cryptocurrency all the time. It's not my thing. I don't, I don't enjoy that as mm -hmm. much, but you have guests with real conversations and I have other people I work with that also, when you listen to them, you feel like they bring a contribution to your life. And whatever small uh, measure is this, am I going to listen to something and I'm, am I going to take something away from that? Because we're so um, scarce with our time these days. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to spend time on something that's not going to bring them value. Even if we don't say it out loud, it's like, okay, this is 20 minutes. What am I going to listen to in 20 minutes? What, how is this going to benefit me Right yeah. at the end of the day? And I, I know you've had podcasts that were longer, podcasts that were shorter. I see the ones that are a bit shorter overall, not just yours, uh, are, are starting to, to perform better because mm -hmm. of that um, uh, attention that people are willing to give to, to somebody else, right? Right, right. And I, I'm sure there's people listening to cryptocurrency because they're interested in it. it it's just not, not my thing. Yeah, it, it's funny on, on that note, I've been, I've been trying to educate myself and uh, somebody sent a video out with, in like a group chat and it was maybe 50 some minutes. But one of the things I appreciated about it once they started was that they got right to the point. They were like, for anybody that doesn't know, this is what this represent. Here's like the pillars of crypto. Here's this, here's that. And I was like, oh my God, thank you for not like, talking around the subject, being super vague, like this is like the web 3.0 or this or that. I was like, no, just, just, just tell me for somebody that doesn't know like what's going on, the basics of it. And as soon as I did that, I was like, I'm sold. Mm -hmm. I, I remember you said in one of the podcasts, I don't remember which one, maybe it was the one with you in the car that um, uh, you weren't sure in the beginning about the the result of the education you were getting where it was going to take you right mm -hmm. maybe at some point if you stick with that um type of job you could explain it in a podcast too mm -hmm. because i know you're working in engineering somehow mm -hmm. but i never really understood exactly what in engineering right it's, mm -hmm. it's like you just said talked about the subject but i never i really understood what type of engineering it is and I'm sure for people, it might be interesting oh, to know what you do. Right. That's a good point. I, I hadn't thought about that because like, I think also that kind of speaks to framing because a, a lot of times, like I, I was mentioning earlier, having a conversation before the conversation, because having to listen back to what you record, when you hear yourself repeat, 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 repeat. It's like, I get tired of myself, of hearing myself say the same things, but then sometimes maybe I've got to think about if I'm going to talk about this thing, let me set it aside, like you said, and just explain it fully. That way someone can be like, oh, okay, this, this is this story here. And then I, this is another story and I can get like the full, um, the fullness of it. So I'll, I'll, I'll work on that. I like your suggestions. Cool. I just realized I can give you a tip that will save you half the time you do for listening back. Mm. Upload it to YouTube first and then play two times speed. It's mm. going to sound funny mm. as an audio, 
but you'll still hear the same words and be able to pick up the segments you're interested in. And then with those, you go and listen to normal speed. But once you have it on YouTube, go tw twice the speed and, and it might sa save you some time. Okay. I'll, I'll give that a shot. <laughs> yeah. the, the easiest I've seen it done is when you do it very shortly after, like the mm -hmm. same day or the next day, and because it's fresh in your mind, the conversation you had, right. and maybe something sparked your interest and you know, oh, this was like halfway in the conversation. So you can go back to that exact time, right? You don't have to listen to the whole thing again. Right, right. I'll, that makes sense. I'll, I'll definitely do that because the one thing where I was just like, I'm done, like, yay, and then walk away and come back to it mm -hmm. a month later. It's like, it might, it might have been a good idea to just do it there and then, like a few hours later, like take a break and then get back to it. And since I'm spilling secrets from behind the scenes, <laughs> I don't know how many people doing podcasts will be watching this, but I actually have collaborators that give me audio cues during the recording. Like they say, oh, this is such a good uh, idea. This is something we're, we'll remember for sure. Mm. Or I don't know, all kinds of things that when I listen, it's like, oh, okay. So you want me to focus on this side, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can say it for yourself. Right. And then right. even if you don't go back and listen to the whole thing, you remember, why did I say that? Oh, it was that type of sentence or idea. That makes sense. I guess with, with um, 2021 coming to... I guess we still have a, a few months, but with it kind of wrapping up with the fourth quarter, how are things looking? Um, how are things been for you in 2021 and kind of going to 2022? What, what are things that you're looking forward to? Wow. This year flew by so fast compared to last year where I felt like I was at a standstill. I still had a lot happening, but this year just flew by. And maybe it's in perspective of what happened in 2020, 2020. Mm -hmm. But this year I, I took a lot more time for myself and for the things I like to do and for the people in my life. And maybe that at some point was in detriment of the financials of the opportunities on the professional side. Mm -hmm. But I feel very confident and very fulfilled with the choices I made to focus more on me. Uh, not in a selfish, narcissistic way, but we always run to get the job done, to get more done, to be, um, I don't know, the best employees, the best achievers, the best, best collaborators. But we do have to be the best women slash men, uh, friends, daughters, uh, lovers, you know for the people around us, the people we care for. Mm -hmm. So this year was the, the year where I took my time with everything. So because of that, it was a very good year for me. Uh, now that the restrictions were a bit easier and the health scares weren't as big as last year, I was able to travel a bit mm -hmm. as well, which was like very good because I haven't done that since 2018. Mm -hmm. So this year has been good for me. And even taking this um, freedom on the personal level, my professional level, uh, my pro professional life wasn't as affected as you would expect it to be. Actually, opportunities came where they needed to come to allow for this freedom to happen, wh which is amazing. Yeah. So I have no complaints. Everybody around me that I care of and my extended community is fine. No major dramas, no tragedies happening. And the rest of the year, I'm keeping this open mind about anything that could happen. I'm not shutting down possibilities, but I'm not actively looking to take on more projects just to, I don't know, uh, run the race, mm -hmm. right? So that was my approach in 2021. And I'm, I, I think I wanna keep it in 2022 uh, as well. Things, fall, things have a way of falling into place. Yeah. You just have to be there to, to receive them. Awesome. I, I like that. And I remember, um, I think earlier in the year when you said you were going on vacation, I, I was just excited for you because I was like, you seem like you're always working hard, working hard, working hard. And I, I can, um, I can relate 
when you say some, you got to take care of yourself and it's, it's not mm-hmm. in a, like, sometimes you do, you do need to be selfish because the better you Absolutely. take care of yourself, the better you can be for those around you. And I'm, I'm glad that's come out of like these past two years and just seeing how people are really being intentional about, Hey, like, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So let me sh- take, let me do my best to take care of what I can today and just do that to the best of my ability and just building the rapport that you do with the people you work with. They know the quality of work and the quality of a person that you are. So nobody's going to be upset that, Hey, you need to take a few weeks or even, Hey, if you need to take a month, like make sure you got everything going how you need to go. And then when we get back to it, we get back to it. Yep. Well, the little workaholic in me did take the laptop (laughs) with me on vacation. It was like, there's no real emergencies in my line of work. I mean, nothing's going to happen if if I'm not there. But if I have the availability to help somebody while I'm away and it just takes me to to take the laptop with me, fine, (laughs) I'll Mm. take it. But yeah, it was nice to get away because I think it's a global thing we all felt a bit cooked up last year yeah yeah very so so fun. this year as soon as i got an opportunity i was like okay let's fly away at least for a week and then then we'll figure it out from there awesome yeah well, and how was your 2021 from that point of view <laughs> well thank you for asking and 2021 for me was it was it was good it it cut it reminded me really to get back to the basics as it relates to, of course, podcasting. I really started this year with being consistent, not only putting out the episode one every week, and then just recording also a few times in the month, like every month having something scheduled, but really focusing on getting back to physical activity, working out um, for mental headspace, really organizing what I needed to doing even counseling and therapy from January through this month. And that's like the longest I've done it in a sense of do some career planning, but also do um, just be able to dialogue with someone on a regular basis and have a chance to evaluate what I'm doing and understanding that even if everything doesn't just like connect the dots, everything perfect in the line, it's like, that's okay. But realizing that you are where you are, if you feel prepared for an opportunity, that's good. If you don't feel prepared, that's also good. But just, just really putting things into proper perspective and really taking the time to um, manage myself. That, that's been a, the big thing for 2021 for me. And it's, it's been very insightful throughout just consistency and limiting what I put my attention on throughout the year has really helped because when I needed to step back and say, I'm not going to do this, people were okay with that. And also knowing that I can still be counted on at the end of the year to show up and even now working in a different capacity, I'm looking to get back into engineering, but taking the better part of this year away from engineering and working in a commercial aspect, I was like, wow, this is different. And it's like a, a blessing in disguise where you realize how much less stress there is. But at the same time, it's like you still have the the people factor where you're you're working with people regardless of where you're going to be and the fact that what you can handle in one setting you can also handle in another setting so it's really taught me a lot like you can meet great people anywhere you can meet jerks anywhere but like (laughs) once you if you get along with yourself pretty well it's like it's it's kind of all a wash it's like and a lot of people even the better that I got to being myself and just being secure within myself to where I'm like, okay, 
I'm going to be nice to you, even if you're being a jerk. And then for them to come back a week later or a day later, and they're like, hey, sorry about yesterday. I was being a jerk or I was fussing. And I was like, hey, that no problem. Like water under the bridge. We're all good. And it, it's almost you, um, one person in particular, like we started off kind of on a, a rocky road. But since then, we've been on uh, on better terms, just being able to communicate, laugh, learn things and and things of that sort on a regular basis. So I wouldn't have thought starting in February, it would be like that in October, but I'm grateful for it. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how much it matters, the energy you put out? Very like much. people around you will resonate to it, either get more of a jerk or get softer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think at, at core, nobody wants to be the bad guy or the evil guy or be disrespectful of other people. It's just not, not knowing any better in the moment mm -hmm. or uh, not having the awareness of what they're to, of the extent that they can damage, right? Right. Because you can't go through life and say, oh, well, I'm not hurting anybody. Yeah, you realize at some point if, if something you're doing is not right. But it's, it takes awareness and it takes other people's energy to bring you back into focus. Yeah. But it, it's funny how you said you, you need to manage yourself because that's true. When you look from the outside, if a friend would tell you your story, you would probably be there and say, hey, I think this would be a good advice for you. Or maybe you should do this or do that. But when it's about yourself, I have the same thing. It's so much easier to talk to somebody else and help mm -hmm. them with their issues than focus on your own. Yeah, it's, it's always going to be like that. But you have to, to go through things to get to that uh, uh, yeah. awareness, right? right and self-management. Right. Yeah, but... <laughs> 2021 has definitely been a, a teaching year and a year to learn a lot. And I'm just, I'm very grateful for that. <laughs> it's funny, just, it's just smiling because it, you don't know what, what's going to happen tomorrow, but yeah. at, at the end of it, I'm like, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Like I'm, I'm hopeful, but at the same time, I'm, I'm ready to, to face it. I'm ready to just go with it i'm not going to like be timid about it or over plan or prepare but i'm going to do enough to say like i'm ready for the day true that's a good attitude yeah thank you one last question i'll, I'll ask you is are you still who you said you are yes my presentation was my professional presentation let's call it and quotation marks, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. To that, I think uh, what this conversation ad added was a bit of my attitude towards life and the energy I want to portray as well, which I think is in line with what you're trying to do. I'm trying to be open to whatever comes, not be too timid. I'm, my self-confidence is, is uh, good for me at this point, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe too self-confident sometimes, but you need to be to go through through situations, right? And I'm just trying to enjoy every day. It's not always going to be uh, the most exciting day of your life. Most days probably will be uneventful, but those are good days too. So yes, I am still who I said I am with a bit more emphasis on the positivity and the, and the awareness, let's call it. I love it. And one compliment I, I'd give you is something um, one of my guests gave to me, and I'd say you're very charismatic in your actions as well as your speech in the way that wow. your, your work speaks for you. Thank you. That's, that's the best compliment you can give me on the professional side, I, ha I have to say. You're welcome. Yeah, this was fun. We should do this again. Of course, of <laughs> course, we make it a yearly thing. Yeah, I'm still waiting for that uh, two years update. Oh, you didn't see it? I only got the first part, the part from oh, the car. Oh, right, right. I've got to, yeah. yeah, I've got to finish it up. <laughs> I always try to keep you accountable to the extent that I can, right? right. My right. My ability, right? 
the rest is uh, whenever you feel uh, the right time is for that. Got you. I almost, I almost thought I was getting away with it. I was like, oh yeah, I did it. It was like six minutes or something. It's like, uh, you, you got a little bit more in there. Come on. Go, go listen to it. There is much more to be added. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.